you, you provide the voice here of Rhino. We can see him in the background, the action-loving, bolt-loving uh, hamster. <laughs> I don't know whether for you there was any kind of preparation for such a, a role, because I don't know whether one can prepare to play the hamster. Well, you know, I guess I lucked out. You know, I mean, I know there's uh, really great method actors, character actors that can take on any... Uh, kind of personality, any kind of accent or what have you. In my case, uh, with Rhino, they, they really just wanted me to be myself, you know. I, I, I thought they maybe would want me to do a, you know, a Rhino, a hamster voice, you know. And they said, no, no, just, just be you, uh, you know, talk the way you talk, you know, be yourself. That's, that's what we want. Uh, perhaps because I am kind of a geeky, nerdy slightly hyper fanboy myself <laughs> about Disney and animation and my my great job and uh, yeah so it seems it seemed to work for them anyway well, I was thinking too that little man with the big attitude whether you know you said okay well I want to try to find out what it is for somebody that small to be that sort of big and that sort of you know dedicated and that sort of confident I was wondering uh, could you hang out with Danny DeVito or Jeffrey Katzenberg <laughs> or, or Brad Gray or <laughs> Well, you know, I, I think uh, with, with Rhino, it's, it's, you know, he kind of lives in his head, you know, he, he's watched TV all of his life, you know, and has kind of lived in this, like, you know, hermetically sealed little hamster ball in his, in his uh, trailer, and, you know, he thinks about the bold show that he loves and how great it would be to be uh, a superstar and to, to, to be a superhero and all those things, uh, so I, I guess, you know, just having the imagination to to know what that would be like uh, was what I had to do. And unfortunately, I didn't get to do a lot of research or you know meet other hamsters or other short uh, people. So uh, hopefully, you know the, the directors took me to where I needed to go. You know, voice wise, character wise. You'll have to be the judge. They do say that people sometimes look like their pets, and certainly in animation, they they are often influenced by the performance of the artist that that that, that voices true. it, and they sort of look for little ticks that might just sort of lend itself to that particular expression or whatever. I don't know if if you looking at Rhino can say, oh, that that looks like a little bit like me at times. You know, it's it's funny. I I I do think that I see certain facial expressions or gestures. You know, there's a part where Rhino does a little dance. That that was. I know that was part where the uh, the animator actually had me uh, act some stuff out to give him some ideas. I'm not sure how much of it is uh, on purpose or how much of it you know I, I'm just seeing because I'm looking for it. I, I'd say if you like something, if you thought it was funny, then it was me. You know, I, I influenced it. <laughs> I know that in high school you really enjoyed acting, but you made the decision that you know the lore of being an artist was was stronger and. You talked about many different things, being a children's book illustrator, a Muppet designer, various different <laughs> elements of, of you know, what might actually be available to you. I, I'm guessing now that maybe you realize that you know, actors get more chicks. I don't know whether there's a sense that, oh, maybe, <laughs> actually, <laughs> maybe I should be an actor now. Well, I, I have to say, like voice acting, at least, is, for me, very easy. I mean, you do a few minutes of work every few weeks, and you don't have to worry about dressing up or learning martial arts or hitting your marks or anything like that. Uh, you know, uh, being an artist is it's a lot of time, it's, you know, it's a lot of concentration, you know, solving a lot of problems, but, but it's very satisfying in its own way. Uh, if, I was, if I was told that I had so many uh, voice offers to do that I couldn't be an artist anymore, I suppose I could live with that. But, but right now I'm enjoying doing both. Uh, very quickly, you, you joined Disney in, in the late 90s, you were on Tarzan and you worked on Meet the Robinsons and, and Home on the Range and Chicken Little. I don't know whether you feel that rebirth is happening since John took over in, in 2006, whether there's a real strong sense of this is a new beginning again for uh, Disney? Well, I definitely think there's an enthusiasm, there's an excitement uh, at the studio where we're all kind of you know, thinking, how can, we, you know, how can we make the best films, how can we do things that have never been done before and yet you know, do stay true to the Disney legacy of, of excellence and making films that the whole family can enjoy. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's an exciting, unique time to, to be working at the studio. I'm very lucky. Rock and roll. I'll be giving the friendly finger to wrap up. <laughs> okay, I can't your day done. You, you, have you got a, a actual day is done? Yeah, four o'clock. It should be your <laughs> last interview to get some freedom. Oh, no problem. No problem. Yeah, have, you, have you been out to the park yet? I have, well not today, no, or yesterday. I've been here about two years ago and I'm oh, right down with my daughter. It's so awesome. I, I love, you know, I'm 